Well, God bless you, friends. Thank you for joining us for another Tuesday night teaching. We bless and thank God for the opportunity just to be, amen, in the house of worship. We thank God for you allowed us to come into your homes, your living rooms, your bedrooms, amen, wherever you're viewing or listening to us from. We appreciate, amen, you taking out the time to partner with us, amen, on these Tuesday nights as we uh, delve into the word of God. I tell you, God's word is just awesome. And what an honor, what a privilege it is to be able to share the word of God with you. Uh, before we begin, let's start with the word of prayer. Our Father and our God, how we thank you tonight. Lord, we thank you for your people. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for the outpour of the Holy Spirit. Now look upon these thy people in this thy servant and words these lips of clay. Lord, give us an understanding upon this night. Bless your people. Keep us forever in the center of your will. Lord, and we shall praise and magnify thee. Give you all glory and honor for these and other blessings are we asking now. In Jesus' name, thank God and amen. We have a beautiful lesson tonight. And that lesson is chapter 7, Speaking Gifts of the Holy Spirit. For those of you who are interested, you can go online uh, to our webpage, um, www.ztministriestn.com, and you'll be able to look on the resources, a study guide, and you can download this particular chapter that I'm teaching on tonight, The Speaking Gifts of the Holy Spirit, and how appropriate it is that we are now in the season of Pentecost. That's right, we are in the season of Pentecost. And the Holy Ghost was given to us at this time as a gift during Pentecost. The objectives of the lesson tonight are, upon completion of this chapter, you will be able to identify the five speaking gifts, define the five speaking gifts, distinguish between the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge. Now, our key verse comes out of 1 Corinthians 12 and 18. But now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it has pleased him. That's 1 Corinthians 12 and 18. There are five gifts which have been given the title of speaking gifts because they always involve speaking aloud. The five speaking gifts are prophecy, teaching, exhortation, words of wisdom, and word of knowledge. Let's go over those five gifts again. Prophecy, teaching, exhortation, words of wisdom, and word of knowledge. The first two gifts, both prophecy and uh, teaching, are similar to two of the special gifts. But the speaking gifts of prophecy and teaching are not the same as the special leadership gifts of being a prophet or a teacher. Now, you can have the gift of prophecy and yet not be a prophet. Understand? You possess that gift, and sometimes you walk in that gift, but that does not make you a prophet. When we understand, bless God, that the scripture says this in 1 Corinthians 12 and 10, for to one is given by the spirit, that is the spirit of prophecy. A person with the gift of prophecy speaks by the special inspiration of God to communicate an immediate message to his people. Prophecy was discussed in detail in the section on the special gift of being a prophet. Everything said there about a prophecy given by a prophet also applies to the gift of prophecy. But the speaking gift of prophecy alone does not mean that you have the special gift of being a prophet. As we previously discussed, God, who has set prophets, also uh, have the gift of prophecy in special leadership positions in the church. Although they prophesy like prophets, people with the gift of prophecy do not have the special leadership or position of a prophet. They simply deliver special messages under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. When the spirit of prophecy comes upon you, uh, because at one point the spirit of prophecy came upon Saul, King Saul in the Old Testament. And the Bible says Saul, when he was trying and attempting to kill David, and he came with the, he came amongst the prophets, 
The Bible said that he prophesied all day. He laid with the prophets all day. And there it was said that King, King Saul was a prophet, but we know he was not a prophet. He was being driven by a spirit. And what we must understand is just because the spirit of the Lord comes upon us and uses us at different times and on different occasions, and because the spirit of the Lord will use us, we must understand that that does not give us a distinct right to that office or that particular gift. It's only that God has chosen to use us at that time. Also teaching, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teacheth. One of the greatest problems or hindrances that we have in the body of Christ today is that there are so many people who do not want to wait on their ministry. They feel like they have to have everything right now. They have to have whatever God is doing, whatever God is saying. They want it here and now. But the scripture has told us and teaches us in the book of Isaiah that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Now, when we learn how to wait on God and understand that waiting on God is never a waste of time, it's only a matter of time. When we learn how to wait on what God has called us to, can I tell you that you should know more now at 30 than you did at 20? You should know more now at 40 than you did at 30. Why? Because time and experience has taught you. Time and experience should teach us that by waiting on God, he always gives us the answer that we need. It may not necessarily be the answer that we want, but we understand that through our patience, that through our waiting on God, God has always done exactly what he said he was going to do. So one of the, one of the speaking gifts, amen, of the spirit is prophecy. The second speaking gift of the spirit is teaching, being able to teach or minister the word of God. Only through teaching are we able to grow. The Bible says in the book of Peter, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Then there's also the gift of exhortation. What is the gift of exhortation? That is the gift to encourage someone else. All of us at some point should want to encourage someone else. Not only do we need to be encouraged, not only do we want to be encouraged, but we should desire to encourage someone else. Romans 12 and 6 says this, having then gifts different according to the grace that is given to us, he that exhorteth on exhortation. The gift exhortation is the ability to draw close to individuals in time of need, counseling them from uh, them correctly with the word of God. To exhort literally means to call a person aside, to advise, recommend, admonish, encourage, or comfort. So you've got to be able to call somebody to the side and just whisper a word to them. Everybody don't have to hear it, praise God, because everybody is not in need of it. But to exhort someone is to encourage them. Honey, you can make it. Baby girl, you can go through this. Young man, God is going to give you strength. Sometimes it means something just to hear an encouraging word. That's why the Apostle Paul writes to us in the book of Thessalonians. He says this, Wherefore comfort ye one another with these words. When he was telling them that the Lord was soon to be, soon to return and he was soon to come back and the people had grown so short tempered and they were growing impatient and paul was saying i want you to comfort one another with these words what words was he encouraging the people of god to comfort one another with that the lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout and the voice of the archangel and the trump of god and the dead in christ shall rise first then we who are alive and they which remain shall be caught up together to be with them in the clouds and so shall we ever be. And then he says in the next verse, work will comfort ye one another 
with these words. There are some comforting words and comforting scriptures that we should keep within our spiritual repertoire in order, amen, to encourage people when they need to be encouraged. Amen. When you're down and out and discouraged, amen, you don't, know, you don't need anyone telling you what you already know, but you need someone to tell you something to get you through what you're going through. I remember an episode, amen, those of us who are old enough to remember Sanford and Son, I tell you, if you truly want to laugh, you watch some episodes of Sanford and Son with Red Fox. Uh, 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 you know, they called him Fred. His name on the show was Fred. But Red Fox and Esther and, and Grady and Lamont. Amen. And one day Fred was looking bad. He was looking sick. And everybody came up to Fred and said, you sure do look bad. They would just tell him how everybody walked up to him and told him he looked bad. And Fred finally got tired of people telling him, you look bad bad. Uh, he looked bad. Amen. He needed somebody to tell him something that he did not know. And as believers, as people of God, we need to be able to tell people something, amen, that they do not know, that they do not understand. We need to be able to exhort them to give them a word of encouragement. Now, the gift of exhor exhortation is the ability to give uh, wise spiritual counsel. People with this gift minister words of comfort, consolation, and encouragement in such a way that others are helped. A modern term for this gift would be the gift of counseling. Exhortation were part of the apostle scholar of plan for the churches. In Acts 14 verses 21 and 22, and when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lastria and into Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. Yes, we need you to continue in the faith. And I want to exhort and encourage everyone that's listening to me tonight. Let us continue in the faith. Brothers and sisters, this is not the time to become discouraged. Hear what I'm saying unto you now. This is not the time to become fearful. This is not the time for us to lay down the mantle. This is not the time for us to slow down. But this is the time for us to pick up the mantle, pick up the speed. And as the word said, as, as, as the old, old folk will say, amen, keep our hands on the plow. And understanding that God is going to see us through. So we must learn how to encourage one another. Amen. How to build one another up, not how to come to each other with negative things. But we have to learn how to encourage each other as a father would encourage his own children by giving patience, by giving instruction with patience. Amen. We must learn how to give uh, uh, exhortation on the basis of sound biblical doctrine. And then we must learn how to encourage and exhort with all authority. And then we must learn how to encourage and exhort more frequently as the end of time approaches. Yes, I believe, I know, brothers and sisters, that we are in the last days. And now, if ever there's been a time that we as the people of God needed to be encouraged, that time is now. The scripture has declared that the end would not come lest there first be a great falling away. And can I tell you that we're in that time now where I believe that there is a great falling away in the body of Christ. People not have an excuse as to why, a legitimate excuse really, as to why they cannot come to church. And you know what I found out right now? COVID, church is the only place where COVID-19 is. COVID-19 is not in the supermarkets, it's not in Kroger, it's not in Walmart, it's not in Target. Amen. It's not in the it's not in the restaurants. It's not in any sports arena. The only place that COVID is is in the church. If you let church people tell it, if you allow church members to tell it, well, child, why you ain't coming to church? Well, you know this is a season for us uh, not to come. Amen. This is a time for us just to be still. This is a time for us, you know, not to do this and not to do that. Amen. Oh, foolish Galatians. That's what the scripture says. Who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? This is the time, beloved, where we as the people of God and we as the church of God must be more faithful. I am determined to be more faithful 
even in these last days. So then we have the word of prophecy. We have the word of exhortation. I mean, we have the word of teaching. We have a word of exhortation. Fourthly, we have a word of wisdom. First Corinthians 12 and 8 says this, for to one is given the spirit, the word of wisdom. There is wisdom that comes with age. There's wisdom that comes with time. But the Bible also says that wisdom comes from God. If there's any of you, the scripture says, who lack wisdom, let him ask God who gives uprightly and he upbraideth not. Now, the word of wisdom is the ability to receive insight as to how knowledge may be applied to specific needs. Given the facts in any situation, a person with this gift knows how to apply the facts and bring a wise solution. The word of wisdom is a divine insight into people and situations that it is not obvious to the average person. This God-given wisdom is combined with an understanding of what to do and how to do it. The gift is not called the gift of wisdom because it does not give one the total wisdom of God. It is a word of wisdom, just a portion of God's infinite wisdom. The gift of wisdom, uh, the gift of the word of wisdom does not come through education. The source of such wisdom is God. To the acknowledgement, look what, which was, look what Colossians uh, chapter 2 verses 2 and 3 says. To the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and to the Father of Christ, in whom were hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Jesus Christ was called the wisdom of God. Godly wisdom is not the same as the wisdom of the world. Look at James 3, 14 through 17. But if ye have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. Oh, can I just pause for a moment right there? If you've got people who are around, who are around you that's jealous, that has a lot of strife, that does some hidden things in their heart against you, amen, where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. If you've got people who are jealous of you, around you, amen, they're going to do everything they can to stop you. If you have people around you with strife and bitterness in their heart, they're going to do whatever they can to stop you from achieving the will of God in your life. That's why you must make a determination within yourself that I would not allow anyone or anything to hinder me from attaining the goal, the spiritual goal that God has set and ordained for my life. For such a time as this, God has allowed and preserved me to come into the kingdom. For such a time as this, God has allowed me to go through the experiences that I had. If it had not been, oh my God, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side. That's what the psalmist said. Now may Israel said that when men rose up against us to eat of our flesh, they stumbled and they fell. You've got to understand something, beloved. Amen. That God gives us wisdom to get to go through different situations. If you do not have the gift of the word of wisdom, you can still develop spiritual wisdom. We need to have a word of wisdom. We need to, we need to have an answer for every man. Some folk I hate to talk to because I know they ain't got nothing but crazy answers. Some people talk crazy. They look crazy. They just crazy. Amen. Ain't nothing like being around crazy folk. Folk that ain't got no sense, don't want no sense. Ain't never had no sense. Ain't going to ever have no sense. Amen. And don't even know they ain't got no sense. Praise God. I don't like being around crazy folk because crazy folk do crazy things. Amen. And they may have me doing some crazy things with them. Amen. And I may just be as, I may be as crazy as they are. So then two crazy folk don't need to be together. So what we need to learn how to do, praise God, and pray is pray and ask God for some wisdom. Wisdom on how to encourage one another. Wisdom on how to teach God's word. Wisdom on know how to edify the body of Christ. When we ask God for wisdom, amen, praise God. Wisdom is given to those 
who live a godly life. Now, amen, praise God. We also have the final uh, gift, amen, praise God, of speaking, of the speaking of the Spirit. And that is the word of knowledge. First Corinthians 12 and 8 says, For as one is given the, by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. The word of knowledge is the ability to understand things which others do not know and cannot comprehend, and to share this knowledge with them under the inspiration of the Spirit. Like the word of wisdom, it is not called the gift of knowledge. It is the gift of the word of knowledge. It is not the total knowledge of God, but only a portion of his knowledge. The source of this spiritual knowledge is God. When we understand that wisdom comes from God, it comes from above. Amen. The Bible says this in Colossians 2 and 3, in whom were hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Then it says this in 1 Corinthians 2 and 11 through 14. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words of man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. The gift of the word of knowledge is revelatory knowledge. This means it is knowledge revealed by God. It is not knowledge obtained through education or study. When Jesus asked Peter a spiritual question, he answered with a word of knowledge. What question was that that Jesus asked Peter and the other disciples? He said, whom do men say that I am? He said, well, some say that you are Elijah. Some say that you are John the Baptist or Jonas or one of the prophets. He said, but whom do you say that I, the son of man, am? Nobody could say anything. But the Bible said Peter lifted up his voice and said, amen, praise God. He said, thou art the Christ, the son of God. That was a word of knowledge. In the word of knowledge that he received, Jesus understood what he had said. And he said this unto Simon. He said, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. The gift of the word of knowledge should be used in humility because you are not a source of the knowledge. God is the source. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edified. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing, yet as he ought to know. Now we thank God tonight for the word of God. I encourage you, praise God. I hope I said something to encourage your hearts. I'm going to pause at this time to see whether or not we have any questions. Well, I hope y'all had some questions. If you didn't have any questions, amen, uh, be sure to download the uh chapter 7. Amen. Be sure to download chapter 7, speaking of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Take the self-test, praise God, and you'll be glad that you did. Listen, I'm happy that you joined us tonight for this Bible study. I look forward to joining you on next week, same time, same place. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you tonight for the word of God, and we thank you for your people. It is our prayer now, O oh Lord, that you look on us in the name of Jesus. God, that you will bless us and continue to strengthen and help us. God, we pray now for understanding, divine understanding. We pray for a word, God, from you. We pray for wisdom. We pray for knowledge. We pray for understanding. We pray for peace in our hearts. Now, you bless these, thy people, and this, thy servant. Bless those who tune in tonight in a special way. And Lord, we're going to give you all glory, all honor, and all praise. For these and other blessings do we ask now. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, thank God and amen. Well, friends, be sure to join us next week, same time, same place. Until then, be blessed is my prayer for you. God bless you. Thank you for watching Zion Temple Ministries. 
Be sure to tune in to Worship With Us via Facebook Live and YouTube each Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. on Facebook Live Stream and every Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. for our Tuesday Night Teaching Bible Study. You can also check out our worship opportunities by visiting our website at www.ztministriestn.com. If you would like to make contributions to the ministry, you can donate via Cash App or by searching Zion Temple Church of God in Christ via Givelify. Thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you soon.